Hello. This presentation illustrates the research on the final part of my PhD thesis entitled Rethinking Stereotomy. Stereotomy comes from the Greek word solid and section. It is a construction approach which aims to materialize arches and vaults by using carefully cut stones. This way, it avoids any kind of reinforcement such as adhesives or metallic elements, resorting to pure equilibrium under the forces of gravity. You can see these of these amazing structures which have populated Europe from Roman times until Renaissance and Industrial Revolution. Nowadays, stereotomy is uh, materialized through digital fabrication, as you can see these carefully cut uh, cork blocks. However, we see how this method creates such waste, as you can see here on the right. As such, the previous research aimed to find a materialization method which would reduce uh, the material waste. This is not the case in milling and water jet, but it is on additive fabrication, as it is in reconfigurable molds which have other advantages. If we see a, a vault and pick one of the, his blocks, we can see that there are special properties, such as these vectors which are, the, which are the normals to the thrust surface. These vectors, if translated into these uh, cylinders, we can use them to wrap, for example, a rubber band around it and create a void which becomes a mold. By carefully cutting a baseboard, with a robot, for example, we are able to create these angled holes where we can put these metallic elements to configure a, a, a mold. In the case of our project, the Tamandua Vault, we wanted to create an asymmetric structure, as you can see here in this drawing, so that we could uh, put in test the digital flow using these concepts. Here you can see a vault blazo through the algorithm created where all the stages of the designing of this vault are put in a continuous uh, algorithm designed in Grasshopper and Rhino. The first stage of the algorithm deals with the creation of the macro shape through a st stereofunicular uh, shape designed with kangaroo which is then populated with points uh, aiming to create the tessellation. This tessellation is adapted to curvature and it eventually, by using the, its dual geometry, uh, is able to create the, the final tessellation where the cells of the voussoirs are created. These cells need to be put into volume and for that we use the vectors uh, which are normal to the thrust surface as shown before which by moving these vertices we aim we achieve volume of course that we need planar surfaces because our mold is uh, built with um, planar metallic elements and so the contact faces become planar using a planarization routine such as the intraduos which uh, use the same technique we see here an image uh, of the model of our vault, in this case, uh, ready for 3D printing. Uh, this 3D printing here, you can see the pieces on the top left all laid out, and uh, they were uh, assembled on top of an EPS uh, centering, which was milled uh, with, a, with a robot. Here you can see uh, a, a, a photo of the finalized uh, assemblage assembly, and uh, here we can attest how the structure is able to, to support itself. Next, we wanted to create a voussoir, uh, not at a 1 to 20 scale as this model, but at a 1 to 1 scale, and so we used our method to create the mold which would be used for all the other uh, blocks. So here you can see the block being milled. And here, uh, in the construction site, we used foam concrete to materialize the, the block 
as you can see here on the right, uh, which is finished. If we can make one of the blocks, we can make all of them. And so we can envision how this structure would appear in the garden, for example. And we can see here some details and the final view of the structure. So this vault designs. This vault design um, illustrates an approach which, by using novel design and fabrication technologies, it uses a centuries-old technique to achieve a minimum carbon footprint in spanning architectonic spaces. Thank you very much.